Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. Today, I'm going to talk about the cycle of life and death. Before I get into that, um, as usual, we're going to be doing a meditation. And uh, one of uh, our sisters, Linda, uh, she had a stroke last week on Thursday. I was just informed by Hilda this morning. Um, and uh, she's on her path of recovery. So what I would like to do is to do a healing meditation uh, together for uh, sending love and light and healing energy to Linda and uh, wishing her and helping her to recover um, as soon as possible. Um, also, I know some of you are still uh, trying to get back to the system and signing up. Um, those of you who just jumped dropped in, uh, I lost my internet because we have really strong winds today. So I had to reconnect. Um, we'll still continue. We'll have like a one, one hour, 15 minute uh, broadcast. Uh, but uh, some some people are just coming back, so I'm a little bit delaying to make sure everybody's on board and we're all on the same page. Part of this, uh, first of all, Linda is a part of the 5D Academy family, and she's been at a lot of uh, my events and past few years. She's been coming to. Uh, our events in Ure as well as in Sedona. She is uh, a sweetheart. I have a lot of love for her. And uh, she's fun, always smiling, very positive. She brings really great energy. And uh, she definitely um, has a special place in my heart. And I have a lot of love for her. So let's. Um, hold her in our hearts. And those of you who've been with me and have learned, learned about how to do distant healing, um, especially when you don't have someone in front of you, you know, their picture or um, you don't know what they look like, uh, you can still do healing on them by intention. And simply what we're going to do is we will bring her etheric body here in front of us. So it's um, simply you centered yourself and you come back to um, by bringing your attention back into yourself. You come, you can visualize a pole of light running through you, which is your which you relate that to your center. It's like a column of light traveling in you. And you bring your attention to this place as you're doing that. And you visualize that you are a column, a pole of light, your pure light. So take a deep breath and relax into being light. Relax into your own presence. Relax into this moment that you're here and you are light. And just see through the power of your visualization, visualize that light is from the center of the earth, light is shooting up and traveling through the earth, coming through your feet, your legs, your hips, your tummy, your chest, your throat, and then your, your face, your head, third eye, and the crown chakra. Light is spiraling up through you and it's going up 
in the space, into the sky. Just take a deep breath. And just in a very easy way, very easy, smooth way. That light, the power of light, the power of love, healing energy is traveling through you as you're breathing in and out. In a very easy way. And as you're doing this, if you pay attention to your hands, you're going to start feeling sensations in your hands that something starts to be happening. You can feel increased energy. And it's very simple because you're connected. You're connected to all things. You are a part of the entire universe. You are that, and this energy traveling through you. And you are the energy. <clears throat> As you're doing this, I would like you to visualize your connection to this network, this network of light through your visualization, that through like light, find yourself connected to each other. As there's these highways of light, instantly connect us to one another. And now since I'm here, you know, on your screen, so you can use me as your focal point that you're connecting to me. If you're not seeing other people on your screen, I believe those of you who are on our system can see five or six people. So whomever you're seeing, you just find yourself through the power of visualization that you are light, laser beam connected to all these other beams. And therefore, it's like a spider web. Everything gets connected to everything. And as you're visualizing this, and don't worry about whether you're doing it right or wrong, because there is no right way or wrong way of doing it. It's simply through the power of intent that connection takes place. And the connection has always been there. And you have done this many times in your life, consciously or unconsciously, that you have connected and you have attached yourself. You have plugged into the connection with somebody or something or an event. And you start to feel and sense it. And these through this net of connection. Now we're all connected with one another. And it's like da 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 it gets connected to each and every one of us. I would like you to bring Linda, whether you know what she looks like or not. Again, if you've never seen her, it doesn't matter. Because this is beyond physical form. And you're simply manifesting her etheric body in front of you. And you can touch her. You can feel it. That you can feel, touch her auric field, her with your hands. Her etheric body is here, and you can use your hands if you want. Because as you bring your hands together, you can feel sensations happening in your hands. You connect to the unified field, the, ener the energy 
Because in subatomic field, you get connected to it as you bring your hands together. And you can feel something's happening in between your hands as you're bringing your hands close to each other, as well as as you pull your hands away. You can feel the energy. And with the power of your intent, our sister Linda is here. And this is her etheric body that you can feel, touch, and sense her presence. And visualize her standing in front of you and visualize that through your heart, you have connected to her heart and synchronize your heartbeat with her heartbeat. As you're breathing in and out, you breathe in and you breathe out. You're feeling her presence with your hands. You're sensing her etheric body. And now you're connecting your heart to her heart and you're synchronizing your heartbeat with her heartbeat. And as this synchronization is happening, we're synchronizing all of us heartbeats with each other. Simultaneously, we become one. The power of one the power of collective is way beyond the individual. And that's the beauty of life. And that's the beauty of an expanded consciousness and the recognition of the oneness, the recognition of the power that resides within you the recognition of who you truly are, your power. And your power, true power, comes from the power of love that's within you. We do have egoic power, but that we have seen spirals down in an ugly direction. We want to tap into the power of love that is within us, that the more you tap into it, the more you become in touch with it, the more you go beyond your mind, you push these fogs and these clouds of the mind away and you dive into your own heart and you begin to feel the love that is here, the stronger the power gets. And it allows you to go beyond your differences. It allows you to go beyond the flaws that we see, perceive with our eyes or sense. It gives you the chance to cut through the bullshit and whatever is tainted your vision to connect to the one heart. And that one heart is the supreme soul. It's the supreme being. It's the love of God. And that love, that pulse is in your heart and you are the source of that. You're in the very center of it. And as you dive deeper within yourself and you settle into this state of being and relax into it, a deep sense of silence, relaxation and connection takes over.
And we have our sister, Linda, in our hearts, in our vision. And we have her etheric body in front of us and we're connected to her, her heart. And in this, as we see her, as we visualize her, as he, as she will feel her presence here in this moment, we transfer and fill her up with love, positive intentions, thoughts, wishes, and healing energy. Sending her love and light. Connecting to her in the subatomic, in this subatomic field of energy, connecting to every molecule and atom of her being. And requesting healing and asking things change in cellular memory. A brand new program of healing is taking place and accelerating to perfection. Change comes for the better as she learns her lessons through this event. Obviously, there is lessons to be learned for her and for us. But she is, since she is the focal point, she is the one who's going through this physical issue. There is lessons for her to learn, lessons for her and her children and family and friends to learn, and lessons for us to learn as we're connected to her. And while we don't want to deprive her of what she needs to learn in this point in her life, we're filling her up with love and light and wishing her to go through her evolutionary process of learning and expanding while we're supporting and loving her. We have no wishes to interfere with her process of evolution, but we want to support her in this process without any judgments, with pure love and light. So hold her in your heart. And know in this moment that your breath and your pulse is synchronized with her and all of us together as one being. Stay in your center and keep breathing in and out. And allow the love and light of God, of life, the beauty of this moment to flow through your being and be shared with all beings in the universe. And trust in that, that the Supreme Soul, the one living spirit that lives in all of us, is in complete control of life and death. As you're in this deep state of connection,
I would like you to visualize her physical body and mental state has come to perfection. She is healing in this very moment. is filled with light, love, and gratitude. As it's happening to all of us. Appreciation of being here, having the opportunity of experiencing beloved life and its trials and ups and downs. and having compassion for millions of others who are struggling, who have not arrived at this level of consciousness to recognize the connection. Having compassion and forgiveness as well. Forgiving ourselves and forgiving others for their flaws, their shortcomings, their mistakes. So ultimately we can all go beyond what is good and what is bad. Keep staying in this place. And allow the power of life to sweep you away and dissolve you into this vastness of the being. Keep sending more love and light to our sister, Linda, holding her in our arms, holding her in our heart. And as her body is recovering and healing up rapidly, Because God is great, God is the absolute, everything is possible. There is no reason not to have an instant healing in this moment. If it's for her best, Allah, keep sending more love. Allow yourself to be right open. Let this river of love and light keep flowing through your heart and shooting it out without any reservations. Keeping our sister Linda at the focal point of our hearts and minds as well as others across the universe. Since this is limitless, 
an eternal. There's no reason in holding it back and keep it limited. Surrender to the flow of life and let light and love and healing energy to take over without any reservations. And use you as a vehicle of the truth. I bless Ra, the fierce suns burning bright. I bless Isis Luna in the night. I bless the air, the Horus hawk. I bless the earth on which I walk. You who are the source of all powers, whose rays illuminate the whole world, illuminate also my heart, so that it too can do your work, your work, your work. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namaste, Namaste, Namaste. Let there be peace, let there be peace, let there be peace among all beings of universe. I hope. As you're slowly, slowly bringing your attention back from an expansion from this state of being and complete dissolution into the oneness, your consciousness slowly gathers and comes back from a total expansion into the individual that you are. You're coming back here to yourself and bringing your attention back into the one pointedness, realizing that you are here in this moment, coming back to your body and nothing to worry about because you are still connected to everything and all, nothing's lost. So nothing to worry about. Since we're one with all, we are able to the right guidance and teachings to connect and become expanded completely and as our concentration and focus comes back into the one pointedness, we come back and we come back to this human being that we are. But nothing is lost. You cannot lose that.
before I start to talk about the process of life and death, um, well, actually, I will talk about this subject, and then uh, one of our participants, uh, Didi, asked me a question, and and I'll get into that too. Um, let me see. Maybe I do this first. Hi, Didi. Oh. Hello. Yeah, hi. Hi. And, uh, thank you. It's nice connecting with you. I um, I know that it's been years ago that you were, you came to one of the 5D quantum healing uh, events we had here in Venice Beach. So uh, thank you for reaching out to me. It was very nice. Absolutely. It's actually more than once. And, uh, and I enjoy it very much, very much. Thank you. So you had a, do you mind, you had a question for me. Do you mind if you share it with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, I, I know that sometimes um, our bodies shift in ways so we can receive downloading, upgrading, whatever that is. And it's been tw two times and almost two full days. And there were three weeks apart where I had symptoms of, uh, great, great fatigue, strong headaches, and um, what was the other? Oh, uh, a lack of appetite. And then the one time I felt almost feverish, the other time I didn't. Um, but then it's just completely gone as if it never happened. And so I just wanted to get your take on, on what could be happening energetically. Right. The... Um well, we're continuously evolving, and we, yeah, I, I will put it in different ways. So one of them, we can say that we're in this purification process. And, you know, some people may think about it of, oh, well, how could the soul not be pure, or why does it need purification? And, you know, that's definitely is a matter of wording, but... It's not like the soul is not pure and needs to get purified. It's the process of our evolution in this body, in this form, at this time. There's this expansion is happening in our consciousness from a singularity, single pointedness that I am a human, human being separated from the source separated from everything else because of the sensation I have and the sense of being a, having the ego, this change starts to happen. The realization that, wait a minute, I'm connected to other things and it's beyond just being one person. So the shift begin to happen. And as the shift happens, things starts to change in the cellular memory. And um, it's like the program is starts to be rewritten. And when this program starts to be rewritten, the, it's like a computer, when you're upgrading your computer with a brand new program and the you go through the process of upgrading it and then the computer gets shut down. I don't know if you've ever seen that. And so the body goes through the same situation. Things starts to be rewritten. Old information, old belief system that we have, which I'm separated. I am someone name this with this identity, that person begins to gradually or suddenly die and to become renewed to somebody else. And this with different people happen differently, but it's still the same process that takes place. And we can see it in life, in the, the change of seasons, in farming, that how things change. If you go hiking or you're on the land, you can see that with different animals and uh, creatures. 
of the shift which is happening or the caterpillar that is turning to a butterfly. And when that process is happening for the caterpillar for the first time is very frightening because you don't know what's happening. It's a metamorphosis of the old you turning to the new. And all of a sudden you're shedding your old skin and something else is, is coming. And then you're opening up your wings and their wings. And now you can, from being limited on the ground that you had to be uh, crawling all over, all of a sudden you're coming to a point that you can fly. That's a major shift, yet it's frightening and painful at times. So a lot of times when we're, we're in a process like that, if we don't have the right teachings and guidance, naturally it could be very frightening and confusing of what is going on. So that's what's going on. And the death of the ego, the death of this imaginary person that I am someone separated from the all, therefore I have my own free will and I can do this or I can do that and these are my mistakes and I've gone wrong here, I should have done this or I should have done that or let me pat myself on my back because look what I've accomplished, what I've done. That part starts to die and dissolve into the truth of the being. And the truth of the being is that there is no individual on this planet that is separated from totality. It's all part of the oneness. So that illusion begins to fall. And in that, the body and the mind and the emotions, they go through a metamorphosis and a change. And sometimes it's confusing and painful. Right. Is there, does this make sense, Didi? It makes sense, though. I don't have any fear. So that's the part, you know, I, I don't have any fear. Right. It's just an observation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily. I, I was just generalizing this answer. Uh -huh. and, uh, and obviously, you've evolved to a point that you're not afraid of what is happening. But naturally, you're questioning it, like, what's happening? What is this? So well, yeah, it was interesting, because the first time I actually, I thought I was dehydrated. <laughs> it was like wow. symptoms of dehydration. And then I'm thinking, oh, I need more water. And then when it happened the second time, I thought, I had had plenty of water. So then, right. you know, one questions, because also it's flu season. There's so much going on and we do wonder, well, is it a physical uh, illness? So there is that question. Right, right. right. And so I guess right. there's, there's uh, for me, the only way I, I really know is if I'm healthy the next day. So that's a confirmation for me that that is, there is that, uh, frequency shift that is happening and, and manifesting in, in the physicality and, and spiritual um, realm, realm. Yeah. The body can't help it not, not react. So, and you always know whether you're coming down with a flu, uh, you know, down deep, you have an idea of whether it's metamorphosis and you're going through a frequency change or not. Uh, especially when you become aware of it. And um, uh, you, you, you know deep that what is going on when you really look, look into it. Yeah, I should but, just, it's a good, re uh, as you're saying, it is a wonderful way for me to pause and just ask. I just, I, I didn't 
ask during those times because I thought, you know, like I said, I thought it was for sure uh, I hadn't had enough water. But then the interesting part about this is, is we think about the body and water and, and the spirit and water is so important and it also helps us to connect with spirit. So I think that maybe I'm, I'm, the body wants more water. It, it doesn't mean that I'm getting dehydrated, but I'm thinking the body wants more water or the spirit wants more water for the body. What are right. your thoughts on that? Well, again, you, you, you know, at every given point, every given time, it's different for everybody. So maybe, you, maybe the body wants more air. Maybe the body wants exercise. Maybe the body wants heat. So you're the only one who knows. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Wonderful uh, to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, likewise. And you know, I'm having our, we're having our 10th year anniversary of fifth dimensional quantum healing. Uh, and Evan, Evan Perman. I yes, know. I know Evan. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're going to have this event on December 19th in LAX Hilton. And um, I was able to get a hold of Ava and uh, trying to get a hold of Lish. Uh, the two blonde girls who were helping me back in the day. And uh, so I'm trying to get the old crew back together to have this event because um, I haven't been doing these events in LA. And uh, I'm, I'm not planning on doing it regularly because of my schedule, but, but uh, definitely this one is going to be um, a big one. So if you can make it, it would be great to see you there. That would be lovely. So we're talking about next at the end of the year. The end of the year. Uh, the, the end, no, February 19th. Oh, I thought you said December 19th. February. Okay. Okay. Maybe I just, maybe, uh, yeah, it, it may, I may have missed. Uh, okay. Right. I'm, I'm <laughs> taking a look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Right, absolutely. And I also I'm presenting at the Conscious Life Expo. I don't know if you're planning on coming to the expo, but... That's, that's a very powerful event. It and is. With okay. all the teachers. So, yeah. Thank you. Great. Thanks for mentioning it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I would like to talk about the uh, life and death, the subject of today. Um, and this, this, we all think about our death. We all think about what is the meaning of life and uh, what's going to happen to me after I die. And uh, it's a very natural question that arises for every human being, uh, especially um, if you are on the path and uh, you're sincere with yourself and you're curious and uh, with this curiosity of where was I before I was, I was on this planet? And where am I going to go after I die? What's going to happen to me? So, um, and you have to understand that um, there's different kind of beliefs. And the traditional belief that I grew up with and I heard was that after you die, you, are, you go to hell or you go to heaven based on your deeds. And this is something that religion teach us, or at least most religions do. And it's an old way of, it's a belief system. And uh, the, which it's been long that for me it's become like a joke. And uh, I, it's been a long time that I don't buy into this one anymore, but it's still the belief system of maybe millions of people on the planet. So there is a life after death in a form of your deeds. And then you may be something really groovy and great. We call it heaven, or you go to some dark uh, place, which is full of fires and misery and suffering, which is hell. But in fact, you know, heaven and hell in my understanding is here on this planet. And some people do live in heaven and some people do live in hell. 
in this life. So in some ways, you don't need to wait for dying. You can experience it here uh, while you're living. And um, there is this also idea, concept that after we die, um, we no longer exist. And, and we're going to be in this maybe dark uh, unit place that uh, there's nothing uh, and it's dark and you are somehow conscious that it's dark and there's nothing and nothing is going on and you're going to be conscious in this place for eternity. And uh, <laughs> that one is pretty hard for me to buy to to digest as well because uh it doesn't really make sense you know but i would die and i will be in this place and it's dark and there's nothing going on and i'm going to be in this place for eternity um <laughs> the idea of the modern world of of what we're just being being brainwashed or to uh, make they make us believe is that there is something really terribly wrong with death and uh, from the moment that I remember from the time that I I opened my eyes to life and what I've seen around with my family and my upbringing and the culture that I grew up and now migrating to this part of the hemisphere. And I still see the same thing, that it's kind of been deeply ingrained in our minds that, that there's something terribly wrong with dying. And we are in this mentality that we're trying to do anything possible to the best of our ability to postpone death. And, but can you imagine, can you just, first of all, I mean, can you imagine if human beings lived, let's say 300 years, they didn't die by age 100 or 80, 90, which most people, you know, live under age 100. But if we lived up to two or 300 years, I mean, A, our planet would be overpopulated. B is you would have a large number of older people that you had to take care of them. C, in some ways it would become extremely boring because most people as they get older, they get tainted with their ideas and the way they are, we get regimented and we want things in a certain way that it has to be in this way, in this style. And most of us don't want to learn anymore as we get older. So, and the way I see it, that life refreshes itself continuously. And we can see that. And how can we not implement this in our daily life? How can we just, all of a sudden, something which is very clearly in front of us, and we've been growing up with it all of our lives, is that we can overlook it and not pay any attention to it as if it doesn't exist and look at it attach it, this horrible thing to it and look at the process of life look at like every you know when as we're as fall is coming the leaves begin to dry and change colors and they fall off the trees and eventually they per perish and they turn to dust and they're gone so and look at the, the rest of the things that's happening continuously is the cycles of 
the the turn of the seasons that that spring comes and it's everything opens up and everything is fresh and the aroma of the flowers and the vegetation and the fact the sun is shining and and it's getting warm and nice and uh everything is growing and everything is flourishing and every the nature is really like happy so it's like the birth and then it comes to summer and then it comes to fall and again the cycle is repeating itself and things kind of going into hibernation and the leaves are falling so it's the the death of the the cycle comes to the end of it and then it goes into the winter and it's really like okay it's it's a little bit darker uh the days are shorter it's cold it's you know you don't see much of the sun uh er some areas is covered with snow you know it's just it's just so natural of this expansion and contraction that is happening and um and the way i see it is consciousness the supreme soul the awareness the being of um supreme supreme soul the one that is here the boss life god is continuously through these different bodies is experiencing life i mean pay attention that let's say in the course of the life that you've been living and let's say you have been alive for anything from 20 years to 90 years of just i'm referring to our participants here our listeners from whatever age just so let's say on average if you're 40 years old how much you've learned in 40 years look how much how many or 50 years or 30 years or 20 years look how many experiences you have had that how much stuff you've learned about yourself about your relationships about the world about things about technology about your food you eat um the way your body functions the both er everything and so it's it's an evolutionary process of continuously learning new things and and evolving and naturally you know you get to a point that oops i lost my screen sorry i'm going to uh Amir can you see me because I don't know if okay there there is I don't know what happens so I lost my my I see you yeah yeah okay so things disappeared so this is definitely one of those weird technological day that uh technology is not really cooperating or is co cooperating halfway so to me is like the grand spirit um as continuously people being born and continuously pe people are dying naturally is like every time a, a child is being born someone coming to this life and is new and they're experiencing everything fresh now let's say a, a, a newborn child for the first time is is having sun sun seeing the sun having sun light coming pouring in to his or her bedroom and experiencing the power of the sunshine and how exciting it is and looking at colors and everything is so fresh and you're taking your 7 year old in an airplane and and you're flying with her from one town to another and the 7 year old for the first time is experiencing being in an airplane and how exciting that is or you're taking him to an area that there is snow and they're experiencing snow or you're taking him to 
Caribbeans and they're seeing the turquoise water and they're seeing fish. And when you have children or you're around uh, people that they haven't seen or experienced something for the first time, uh, even though when I was in Sedona, Arizona, and you guys came to Sedona, and I got it, I got to see some parts of Sedona with fresh eyes because I got used to seeing it the way it is. And having you there, I noticed things I wouldn't notice normally. So it's fresh. So I, the way I see it is that the Supreme Soul, the one life, one, one being that keeps manufacturing itself, keeps renewing itself through new people being born, new babies coming to life, is experiencing life brand new every time. And also in this process of death, of dying, I don't see anything wrong with it. How beautiful it is. It's the way we're looking at life and death, our mentality of our bringing, the way they've conditioned us is, the, in my opinion, is regimented and it's wrong. Rather than as we're getting older, as we're getting closer to transit, instead of celebrating this transition, instead of looking at it that this is graduation, of looking at it that we're going, we're evolving and I'm entering into my new era, rather than having this deep fear of I'm going to be isolated and isolated and miscommunicated when I die and I'm going to be in this dark place without anybody around is, is completely ridiculous in my point of view of why would existence want to create such, such a thing when everything else in life when you're living is so amazing. And furthermore is like, wouldn't you imagine that when it comes to your final moments of death, when finally the ego is ready to let go and, and there's nothing else you can do, your technology, your medicine, your family, your money, nothing can help you any longer and you're completely powerless. And there's nothing you can do to extend your life. And finally, there's the death of the ego. There is the death of this belief system that I'm separated from everything else. And that is going to die. And you're in your final moments of this transition. And all of a sudden, in this moments that you're transiting, to the afterlife, you get to realize the meaning of life. You get to understand what the whole thing was about, which was almost impossible to understand it prior to that, because you have to get to this point. You have to come to your transition. You have to be mature enough and ready to transit and then all of a sudden, right in these moments of transition that you're going to die, you start to see the meaning of life. You start to understand it because there's no longer this idea that you're separated and there's no longer this fear and this thing that's been lingering around trying to hang on to dear life to the very last moments of it is there. So now you're right open, wide open, completely surrendered. And it gives you a chance to go through this transition consciously, 
completely conscious and aware instead of being in this place of fear of trying to hang on to something you're con com completely conscious in meditation that now the body is going to fall it's going to die it's the death of the body it's the caterpillar losing its skin and its old shell for the butterfly to come out of it. So that's how I see it. And that's beautiful. And I can't wait in some ways. I mean, I can, but it's something to look forward to, not something to be afraid of, of this transition. And that's where we've been brainwashed and conditioned to be so frightened of it and really not celebrating it, not cherishing it, not welcoming. I'm not saying we're rushed there to say, okay, I'm just going to shoot myself because I want to go to this thing. No, I'm going to enjoy every moment I have in this life fully and be present with its ups and downs but I also welcome the transition of the next level. And quite often it's in our culture and it's, on, it's sort of in the human psyche that we are afraid of what we don't know. And we always want to destroy and kill things we don't know and opposing it rather than being open to exploring it. And that's, you know, it's, it's happening every day. You know, it, it's happening with our religion. It happens in cultures. Um, whenever something new with the ideas, let's say the moment that um, any scientist or any astrologers or any Phys physicists or any physicians, they come up with something new, they're always meeting resistance of the opposition because they're afraid of this new idea. You know, like, like when they came up and they say the planet Earth is round or it's, or it's turning around the sun instead of the sun's turning around it. Uh, or the idea of hell uh, or heaven. You know, whenever you come up with a brand new idea, you're going to meet opposition and you're being suppressed because it's something new and people don't know about it and they're afraid of it. And so when you're afraid of something you don't know, the best is to destroy it. Let's kill it because I'm afraid of it because I don't know anything about it. Also, when I look at the description of the different religions and different cultures, like, all right, in the Western mind or in some uh, parts of the world that we're referring to life after death is being defined uh, by your deeds and you can go to heaven or hell which is being teach by some religions and then you go to some of the eastern religions like Buddhism or Hinduism and they're talking about that there is karma and there is reincarnation and you will be coming back to life again and renewing your life and you're going to be living in, uh, uh, and you may have been doing it, you know, like thousands of times. Re you have reincarnated thousands of times. Okay. So now, they also say that when you're reincarnating, coming back, all your memory is wiped out. 
So, okay. So let's, for example, we're talking with each other and some of us that we have expanded, we have opened up and now we're open to Eastern philosophy, ideology, mythology, religions of the way they're thinking. We believe that we have had past lives and some of us, we say, okay, I remember this past life or that past life. Now, let's look at this in this way, that you have had past lives. Now you're, you die and you're going to be reborn. And as you're reborn, uh, your entire memory is wiped out. Okay, so if all of your memory is wiped out and you're being reborn, well, how do you know you're being reborn? How do you know it's not someone new is being born? Because you don't remember any of it. Have you ever thought about that? You're coming back, supposedly, and there is no memory. Well, if there's no memory, then how do you know? How do you know you were here? And what difference does it make? If you can't remember what your past life or lives were, what difference does it make if you're someone new being born for the first time or you're an old soul and you've been around so many times? It won't make any difference. You know, who cares? What's really important that we're here and of course, it is important. These questions are important. I'm not saying they're not important. And I'm not saying it's not coming up for anybody. We all have thought about it and think about it, whether we think about it from a place of no fear or fear. But what is it going to do to me in this moment? Is it going to add or it's going to take away from me? What's going to do to me? Is it going to make me want to live more or less? Is it going to make me experience less or experience more? And let's say hypothetically if you're born and you have your memories of past life, let's say you bring those memories with you, okay? Do you think it's going to be fun to bring your memories from past life with you? I mean, think about the traumas that you've gone through and some of you and some of my viewers and they're using, they're going through trying to get over the em emotional traumas for 50 years, working on themselves, going to different psych uh, psychologists, doing psychotherapy, going to different gurus, teachers, trying to get rid of these emotional traumas. Would you like to bring them back with you from past life and remember them? And in your new life, you have to deal with them too. I don't think that's fun. So wouldn't you want to come back to this life fresh and start things all over? And also the things you don't like, you know, we all have ideas. Okay, maybe I don't like this and I don't like that. You know, look at yourself and the things you like and you don't like. And now you're born, you're reborn. And immediately, without experiencing something new, you don't like it. So I think existence knows what it's doing. And if there is such a thing that it's the same me being born again, I think existence knows very well that I should come back to this life without my previous memories, fresh completely because existence wants to experience life, consciousness, 
that keeps manifesting itself and has been doing it ever since the ever since wants to experience itself fresh through the eyes of a new person as well as through the eyes of an older person existence wants to experience the process of getting older the process of getting more simple the process of surrender this most people who are getting older first of all getting older is very beautiful there's nothing wrong with it is some people they get older so graciously i saw that with my parents i see it with my mom that how graciously she has become older and there is so much to learn from people who are getting older especially for the younger generations who have very little patience for their elderly or very little respect for their elderly you got to see that these people have gone through 80 90 years of life they have seen so much maybe they're not technologically advanced or they're not hip or cool the way we think but they know so much they've seen so much of ups and downs of life they've lost family friends their beloved friends they've lost money they've lost countries governments they've gained so much they have experienced so many different parts of life you can learn so much from older people and you're gracious, graciously coming to the end of the line but you are not going to end because you're not this body who's going to end it's the same consciousness that continues living through different forms so it depends where your identification is is your identification in this form or my identific identification is on that which is here that which is life which one am i so if i'm only concerned and identifying with the form yes so the end of the form is the end of me but that's not how it is for the spiritually advanced for the one who starts to recognize and realize that you are the i am the i am the presence and the presence i am is formless and sees forms coming through and going but it's always here and it gets to experience life through different forms all these billions of different beautiful forms that they experience all these different events and that's what consciousness is and you are that so we can relax into that and in that relaxation in that surrender to the i am honoring and cherishing the form getting older and also not having any fear that this is going to be the end of you and celebrating your old age celebrating getting close to the end end line as as an a major accomplishment and getting ready for the transition without the fear of oh my god i'm going to be stuck in this dark hole for the rest of my life of the the caterpillar is dropping its old shell 
and now it's going to open up its wings and celebrating that now you're going to fly and experience something completely different and new. So there's nothing, my brothers, sisters, to be afraid of death. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's completely a natural part of the cycle. Because it won't be the end of you. You don't need to worry about that part of it. You're not going to end. This, this is not the end. This is only a, a transition. This is only a journey. You're traveling through this dimension. It's like you're going to, you decide to, to okay, I want to go see Cairo, Egypt, and then I want to go see Aswan, and from there I want to go to another country and another country. I want to go to Thailand, I want to go to Bali. So you're just traveling through these different countries. And the same thing is here. You're traveling through these dif different dimensions, one way of saying it, or these bodies traveling through you. And you get to experience all these different dimensions, all these different sorts of forms of life, and that's very exciting. And that's really nothing to fear, to be afraid of. Very good. So we're at 11.30. Some, anybody has any questions for me? I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, let's see. I am going to... Take this phone number, type a message. So, um, all right, Ut Uta, I'm going to write my number to you right now. 59. And if you want to take it, um, I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. I've never done that before. So let's see what happens. Uh, how do you send a message to someone? Huh, there's so much to learn sometimes. Okay. All right, I send my number to you if you want to jog it down and Feel free to, to contact me afterwards. Uh, let's see, where are you? you? Are you still here? Oh, there you are. Let me unmute you. Did, did, you, um, did you take my number, honey? Now I see it, yes. Yeah, okay, jog it down because I'm dealing with all these different uh, cameras. So if you want to put it down and then uh, WhatsApp me, I'm around and we can talk. Oh, perfect, perfect. Um, do, do I need a number before before the three from Germany to the US? I think it's zero. I think it's zero one one. Does anybody know? Because I don't. I don't. Uh, I believe it's. Is it zero zero one uh, or zero one one? Anybody? Um, okay. Nina? I, I take a look at the internet online. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of uh, announcements. I will be presenting at Conscious Life Expo, and that's going to be February 7th, 8th, 9th, and then on February 10th, uh, it's the post conference, and I do have a two and a half hour workshop. Uh, my booth number is number 502 in International Ballroom, and um, you're welcome to come and visit me. Two of my events are free events and two of them are paid events. 
Um, after the Conscious Life Expo, I'm uh, celebrating the 10th anniversary of fifth dimensional quantum healing, which started it here in Los Angeles. And we had our first event on February 22nd, 2010. 2010, I had my first event. And um, I completely, honestly forgot about this till a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, which I was trying to, I was putting my schedule together and all of a sudden I realized, wow, it's been 10 years since we started it. Uh, the 5D, 10 years gone by. And it was like, I can't believe it that uh, I had my first official event 10 years ago. So, and we're still here. We're still hanging in there. And then I thought, okay, this, I need to make a special event out of this, uh, honoring it, celebrating it. And uh, so I'll have this event February 19th, 2020 at LAX Hilton. So I hope you can join me if you live in the area. Uh, and followed by Return to Love workshop, which I'm going to have here in Los Angeles for the first time. I'm offering this workshop and that's gonna be at the end of February, February 29th, uh, March 1st. Those of you who are gonna to come to the expo, I have prepared a free gift for you. And if you're coming to my uh, two-day workshop, I also have a gift for you. It's a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what that is. You have to come there to find out. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a surprise. You know, if you say what it is, then it's not a surprise. Um, we also take volunteers. If anybody wants to help, uh, just contact me, please. My email is... Uh, info at zaratustra.tv info at zaratustra.tv or you can uh, reach out via Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. I want to send you a lot of love and light. Oh, one other thing. This uh, um, broadcast is going to be recorded. The full broadcast is going to be on Facebook as well as on my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to be a part of it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Zaratustra 5D. And uh, don't be shy to, to share it with uh, your friends or loved ones. We're trying to spread the message all over the world. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Sending you lots of love and light. Namaste.